welcome everybody! Today we have a special new kind of series for you today! It's gonna be amazing! So we have Herman Schaefer here! Hello everybody! We are going to try to do in this series to analyze different uh, sides of what the professionals do. Like uh, what decisions they make, how they hit the ball, how they move. And if we show the professional players that are doing something like extremely amazing, like the kick smash, is that something everybody can use? We will try to tell you which are the things that you can copy yeah. and which are the things that it will be more difficult to copy. And I think it would be very interesting to watch how many styles of technique there is. You can clearly see that everybody has a completely different style. But absolutely, I think that's something good to see that every player has their own style. Yeah. The idea is to find uh, which are my skills and then build everything around that. Yeah. So today we're going to speak about what the professional players do before, during and after they hit the ball to have the best possible control. And we're going to start and see how Ale Galan is doing that. Let's start the video. Let's go, vamos! Vamos! Ale Galan is probably one of the players that does the best in that in that field. He's yeah. one of the players with better footwork and, and, and body movement, so it all starts there, really. Yeah, he does a lot of things already before they hit the ball. If we analyze him before that movement, there's a lot of information that we can see, and I think a lot of club players make a lot of mistakes just when they're standing on the court. Okay, so you think people stand, tend to stand wrong on the court? Yes, I think many of the things that happen after come from the first position on the court. Okay. Yeah, so let's start with Ale Galan today, because what is he doing very, very well, German? The, the important thing, if you look at the image, when he's standing still before the opponent hits the ball, his head is very forward, which means the weight of his body is on his toes. Okay. The advantage of that is that his next movement will be very easy to make. So, it's in terms of effort, it requires very little effort to make the next movement. It takes less time also. Yeah. Which at the end of the day, that's what we want. We want to move with the less possible effort to save energy yeah. and with the less possible effort to save time as well. Yeah. And the other good thing he's doing now, he just bent his knees a little bit to be able to push forward and to give him flexibility, but he's not really low, low, low on the ground. Many of my clients, yeah. when they are waiting for the ball, they bend the knees a lot which pushes them back and makes them a lot, a lot heavier and a lot, a lot slower. But you really want to have your, your lower body a little bit high and, and your upper body a little bit forward. If you're moving to the side without turning, you still keep your head forward. Yeah. If you turn, your head still stays on your toes. So basically, whatever you do, your head wants to be on top of your toes. Yeah. If you see him turning, see, his head is on top of his toes. Now, you see he's bending his knees more, but that's because he saw the ball going down, he thinks he needs to go down, then he goes down. But he doesn't go down before he knows he needs it. So, so when you move, you are high, and when you want to hit, you can be low, depending on the height of the exactly. ball. Exactly. So the idea is that I don't want to go down if I don't really have to. <laughs> Everybody turn your phone off except the camera woman. <laughs> sorry guys, things yeah, will happen sorry. in your life. <laughs> you know what would be very interesting if you want is just to see that it's not the only case. Let's see a player that is very diff different from him to see what he does as well. I, I can get Sanyo here. Okay, that would be perfect. It's a completely different player, a different style. Yeah.
you can see that Sancho, yeah, still his head is forwards on top of his toes, legs just bent a little bit, uh, and it's not very low. No. Actually, the, he's standing there to receive the serve, which normally is a very low ball. Yeah. But still, he's not low yet. Mm. Because if he needs to move, he knows that if he's too low, he won't be able to move properly. That's why he stands like that, and as soon as he sees the ball, he will decide if he goes down right away because the ball is close to him and whatever. Yeah. But if he has to move to the middle, he will go down as he goes to the ball, not before he gets to the ball. Germán said the legendary words to me, your head is lower than your ass. <laughs> That's how I run. So it's good for me to look at Sonio, I think. He's going really low, yes, because the ball was very low. He prepared, he prepared, and when he saw the ball, then he went down. It's all about uh, this, this one. So the front leg stays 90 degrees, but look what happens to the right knee. The right knee is the one that really goes down. Yeah. It's very, very close to the ground. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you see Ale Galan, for example, or if we see Ale Galan, here we have again the 90 degrees. Yeah. Ale Galan is a player that I like to play with the arm quite straight and Sanjo likes to play with the arm closer to him. Yeah. So, yeah. different players, different ways. Yeah, so now let's speak about Dineno. This, I, I like this guy a lot. He's super, super nice on the court. Super fast, very, very active. If you see a split step, it's already like bang. Yeah. It's yeah, completely yeah. opposite of Sanyo's split step. He's boom. He's, he's, yeah. If you compare this to Sanyo, his split step is insane. So Sanyo is a player that plays with a low level of activation. He doesn't need it. Yeah. Uh, the Neno is probably the, exactly the opposite. If you are a tennis player and you're moving to paddle, this is exactly what you need to learn to make this step back, in my opinion. This is so interesting that uh, the Neno is stepping back to the glass to get more space. Now his uh, back foot is more bended. He's putting the weight of his body on his left foot. Yeah. And that's a strong foot in that moment. Many people, when they step back, their head, head goes back. Goes back. And now he's stepping back, but his head is still in between his feet. And, and to the in side. The left. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. yeah. So very, very important. Now, what is good to see that his uh, back foot is very, very low on the ground. Yes. His right foot, Absolutely. super low. And, and you see it again, the 90 degrees angle on his, uh, front right, foot. Uh, his front foot. Yeah, on the left. What we were showing before. I think this is the, one of the most underrated things about balance or, or, or paddle, to have your head with the ball. Yeah, so the good exercise for people would be Head with the ball, play the ball, head with the ball, play the ball. I think that will help uh, a lot. No matter where the racket goes, you can follow the racket with your head and that will keep everything in place. By, by moving my head, that forces me to move my shoulders. If the racket goes down and my head goes down, that will force me to bend my knees as well. So, I think it will happen automatically. Yes. Yeah. So it's a good way to move many part of my body without really thinking. Your head is the leader of your you body. Just focus on one thing. Yeah, focus on head balance, the rest will follow. Yeah. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. You're Dineno tomorrow. So, very, very important aspect is, is the positioning after they played the shot. So, Dineno played the shot, boom, he looks at the ball. Up and forwards, look. He went out of the screen. So he was so fast with recovering, he was out of the screen. Yes. So, so <laughs> this is what you did. This is your goal. So you play the shot. We saw it with Alec and He played the shot, bam, straight to the to the one step behind the, the service line, and he's back to to get the next ball back. So now Stupa against Holland, which is a good, very good team, of course. Of course. Yeah, of course. Yes. Thank you, Freeman. Um, so now it's very interesting to see where is Stupa's racket positioned when he's running. Let's play the clip. Let's let me know if you can spot it. And comment now, not later, because then it doesn't work anymore. He, he first finds his balance, but then his racket was in front of him, 
and that's why he could have such a quick reaction because the racket was here. If he would have the racket hanging down or here, he wouldn't get this fast or this quick to, to the right position. Like some people run like this and he is running with the racket in front. So you want to have the racket in a neutral position yeah. that can let you go quick and two, you go. Two different things and, and, and just a soft uh, touch. What he did is just place it. Yeah, and what I normally do a lot is, uh, is I, I, I would hit this, this, this ball. I would do extra. Yes, well, that's the difference between the professionals and, and, and the rest of the and, players. And the rest of they they like, keep it very simple. Like my level. He's playing flat. And most people have the belief that a volley has to be sliced. And not necessarily. Again, a flat volley. Yeah. And where's the head? With the ball. <laughs> Here goes chilling. Yeah. <laughs> Head with the ball. So what can you take and learn from the World Paddle 2 players that you can put into practice right now? Point number one. When you're waiting for the ball, keep your head with your toes. Always. Always. You can do it. Everybody can do it. It's even more important for amateur players. Yeah. Second one. I have to do this, not this second. Head with the ball. I always follow the ball with my head. If the ball's there, I go there. If the ball's here, I go here. But not with your eyes. Your eyes on the ball. Yeah. Uh, and I'm also a big fan. It's not that we spoke about that. It's to hit and have a little bit, look a little bit longer at where you hit the ball. For me, it feels like I have way more control. Well, you want to have your eyes on the ball when the ball is coming. Yeah. But not really necessarily when the ball is going. Yeah, because I feel that many people do, especially with the smash. Yeah, so no. fast, it's, I, I, I feel I play way better when I bomb and yeah. then there. Different styles, but yeah. normally it's like that. Yeah. So what is the third point? The third point... You want help? Uh, comment below. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, when you move on the court, always keep your racket in front of you and ready, because then you can react very quickly. If your racket is down, it's going to be difficult to react. And even more important, if your racket is done and it hit you in the body, you won't be able to get protected from that ball. So if yeah. your racket is here and the ball comes to you, you can easily protect yourself with and the And neutral. Yeah, yeah. You don't want to show forehand or back, and you want it in the middle. Yeah, so you can do forehand and back end at the same time. Uh, sometimes when they play super fast, I'm a little bit more to the back end. I like that because I can block a little bit more. But um, of course, some people play to your forehand as well. Uh, if there is another point that you find interesting that you, uh, that you saw in this video, please point it out in the comments. If you want to see uh, an analysis video about a specific shot, a specific player, then comment below what player or what shot we should do an analysis video about. And um, thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next Paddle Analysis episode. Hasta luego, ciao, adios. Hasta luego.